Since Paul, you caused an upset in the semi-final when you defeated Tom Curie. How are the nerves for uh, tonight's final? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty good now. Well, the first game against Tom, that was nerve-wracking. But this game, I'm really excellent. I just hope of both of us well. Good bowling. Well, good luck. Alan Atkins, you would have watched that uh, semi-final, no doubt, and uh, saw Paul cause the upset. Previously uh, to the 279, which was bowled by Terry Wenban, you held the TV record game, 278. You must like the uh, pressure of TV finals. Uh, John, that was a, a fair while ago, so I, and I've been bowling well, so I, I hope to better it, but we'll see what happens. So I'd like to uh, congratulate Paul on, on a good match, and uh, I'll give him my best shot tonight. You're a left arm, but does that give you any advantage, do you think? The only one in the competition. Um, everybody reckons so, but we'll see, mate. We'll see. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to a great final for the Coca-Cola Classic. And joining me in commentary, former four-time Australian champion Steve Mackey. Well, thanks, John. And this should be a great match now between the uh, King of Queensland, Alan Atkins, and his uh, tenacious opponent, Paul Morland. Atkins up in the first frame on lane 13. A pair of lanes here at Logan City that have had the only 300 game bowl in the centre. Wouldn't it be nice to have one in the grand final? $5,000. And that's a strike to open up. Allen's on the way. Yes, a great way to start by uh, Alan Atkins. As we said, a perfect game, a 300 game, brings a bonus of $5,000 from Goldpin and Coca Cola. And joining us also in the commentary, for the grand final of the Coca-Cola Classic, it's Bob Cook, who's the editor of uh, Pin Action magazine. Thank you, John. A great start by Alan. He's the only left-hander we've seen so far. Alan watched with interest that shot of Paul's, which wasn't a good one. Paul's hit the pocket. He's still got two pins standing up. So he's behind the eight ball right from the beginning. Yes, a lot of deflection off the uh, the ball in the uh, the ball heading into the right uh, place and Paul's moving three boards three inches on the approach towards the right. He's hoping to hit the left side of that middle pin and he's going for it. He's got it. What a great spare by Paul Morland in the first frame. And great sportsmanship had brought applause from Alan Atkins realizing how well bowl that was. Yes. Pinpoint accuracy. What a terrific start for Paul Morland. That'll give him a bit of heart to go on. Can he come back with a strike now? He's jumped up on lane 13 rather quickly. He better take his time in this important match. So Alan Atkins, who was the top seed, started with a strike. Paul Morland with a great spear. He follows it up with a, an equally good strike. So both of them start in fine form. Yes, we should have a, a very good match here. These uh, two bowlers are very, very keen to win their first uh, major title on national television. They don't come any bigger than the Coca-Cola Classic. The winner of this uh, tournament gets $1,000. The loser gets $700. Both of them receive trophies from the Sunshine Trophy Company. And Atkins get a double. It's coming up. Oh, tough break. Seven pin. Corner pin. Let's have a look what happened. That four pin jumped around the back of the seven. And they're three pound seven ounce pins. Uh, Atkins uh, looking philosophically at that. There's another angle on it. But it still stayed. <laughs> I guess if we looked at it long enough, it might eventually go. You don't leave that too often. So, Ellen. The left-hander getting across to the right-hand side of the line for delivery and well bowled. Yes, it was well bowled. He, uh, he changed balls that time. Uh, as we've discussed uh, throughout the, the ten programs, the uh, balls these days are uh, urethane-covered, plastic, uh, rubber-covered, and that one there, a little of the harder variety so that he could slide it across the lane and, and have plenty of room for uh, picking up the seven pin. But he's back now on, on lane 13 with one of the very soft varieties of urethane bowling balls. Top of the third frame for Alan Atkins. Nice and smooth. Yes, a great strike in the third frame. Lane. <laughs> to start the fifth frame. Oh, boy. And, uh, <laughs> yes, we all did that, Alan. Uh, you yes. You're not alone. Have a look at this one. Jump up on the nose and uh, broke that uh, corner pin up and uh, almost cashed for a strike. But uh, he'd be very, very pleased with that. That result, nine pins ahead now after three frames. 69 plays 60. Yeah, 
This, this should be an easy spare for Alan. Uh, he still has an advantage over Paul, but Paul has one strike up. No mistakes there. Paul gets another strike. He'll be back into the match. And perhaps the home lane advantage having something to do with this competition because these two bowlers qualified one and two and in fact have gone through to meet in the final it's the home lanes for Paul Morland here at uh, Logan City and Alan Atkins bowls both at here and at uh, Greenslopes and of course Atkins won the Winfield Classic tournament in 1982 1983 and 1984 at this very center so he's got uh, good uh, home ground uh, knowledge there but uh, the winners have averaged 212 in this tournament following Munson's 246 in the last program and, and both of them now shooting in the small 200s. Paul Morland likes it. The last pin falls and he picks up the strike in the fifth. So now the advantage back with Morland. Uh, one pin the leader after five. And have a look at this one. There goes the four pin. Just going now. You know, this uh, stepladder final in 10-pin bowling is one of the most ex exciting sport uh, events that there can possibly be. It's really a Walter Mitty fantasy. Dreams can come true in one game. Any bowler uh, can get up in one game. And uh, Paul, uh, having never won uh, very many major tournaments outside of Queensland, uh, would love to beat Alan Atkins, who's uh, been a winner on the national circuit. Paul Morland, top of the sixth frame. Leaves himself with one pin for his spear. And that one uh, pin that he's left standing there ties the match up in four frames, 89 to 89. And that's uh, last pin falling there has uh, tied the match up. And uh, it'll be a ter terrible thing, uh, John, if they tied this game because they'd have a two-frame playoff to decide the winner of $1,000. Gets the spear with no trouble. Yes, these sudden death things are not uh, much good if you have a weak, uh, a weak heart or a weak, uh, a weak mind. And uh, champion bowlers uh, still get up there with four steps and, and throw a 16-pound ball, but they don't, uh, they don't worry about it as much as, as novice bowlers do. They have good form, good timing. Alan Atkins, a, a perfect example of that, one of the very smooth bowlers on the circuit. Taking his time, concentrating hard. He starts yeah. in. Four strides. Delivery good. Leaves one pin standing, though. And uh, came back very steely-eyed with that one. He was uh, displeased with that, that corner pin standing again. That's the second time that four pin's fallen in the gutter and forgotten to take the seven with it. So that completes the fifth frame. At the end of the fifth, Paul Morland, the leader by the solitary pin. Alan Atkins looking to pick up his spare in the sixth. And he does. Alan possibly just showing a little sign of nerves. He's not coming through the ball so smoothly. It's not rolling like it normally does. And uh, he's just losing a little bit of effect off the ball, which results in the corner pin staying up. It's tough in a one game, playing for $1,000. A lot of things run through the mind. And then the fingers don't work properly. Alan Atkins moves over to lane 13. The ball his seventh frame. Well, they work properly that time, Bob Cook, because that's a strike now in the uh, seventh frame, and uh, I know that uh, Alan is very nervous uh, going into this match. Uh, he had a pretty stiff drink just before the game started, and uh, that may have uh, relaxed him a little, but I guess uh, the effects of that have worn off now, and he's sweating profusely. Well, Paul Morland. Needs to strike to stay ahead by it. One pin. Can he do it? Well, now he's behind by a pin. That leaves himself with not too difficult shot to uh, pick up his spear. Yes, the pin number's four and seven. He's moved way over to the right of the approach and he's shooting right across the lane at it. And gets it. Leader by nine pins after three. Tied up though at four. Paul Morland taking the lead by one after five. And Alan Atkins back in the lead by one after six. We don't get them any closer than that. Paul Morland starting the eighth. 
Well, it's his turn to uh, leave that corner pin standing. Alan leaving the seven pins and uh, Paul here leaving the ten pin. That pin falling in the drain but not taking the other one with it. Moving right over to the left-hand side this time. As I noticed Paul cut his follow-through short then. Uh, as in most sports, the follow-through is all important. And Paul has an excellent follow-through. Yes, uh, it's important to keep uh, the mind going on the basics of the game. That is relaxing before you take off, getting your proper stance and following through. And if you do any of those things less than the uh, perfect shot in a tense situation, you're not going to get the result down the back end. Alan Atkins, the strike to build on in the seventh at the top of the eighth frame. He'd love one here, but it's a wayward shot. Ooh, and a tough spare, too. He's got two pins standing there, but uh, not an easy combination. It's the pin numbers four and eight, but as a left-hander, he's going to have to uh, hit right in the centre of those two remaining pins to ensure himself of a spare and a two-pin lead going into the ninth frame. Remember, if it's a tied match, they'll bowl a two-frame playoff to decide the championship. Back changes ball to pick up his spare. And only just got it, too. Uh, I was a little concerned that he might chop that spare, but uh, he allayed my fears by getting a, a count up there on the board. Alan Atkins, the leader by two pins at the completion of seven frames. As he moves to lane 13 now to bowl the ninth frame. And these bowlers to get to this championship form bowl four or five days a week. Doesn't like it. Mm, coming back and uh, wondering why he rushed that shot. He certainly did rush it. He got up uh, to the foul line very quickly. He knew at the moment he let the ball go, but a bit late uh, then and uh, fortunate to break that uh, lot of pins up. It could have been anything. So now trying to pick up his spare in the ninth and gets it. That was a big result getting nine there. It's left him in the lead. Still having the pressure on Morland now. Morland has to come back with a strike to stay in this match. Yes, and no matter if the lead is, is just one pin or, or 20, 30, 40 pins, the pressure is always there. The leader is always in the box seat. Paul Morland taking plenty of time, fiddling there with his hand, trying to get it set squarely in the ball. And boy, he's taking a long time. Paul Morland starting the ninth. Found ocean frame. And gets it. A strike just when he needed it, Paul Morland. Well, he took a long time over it. I was a bit worried that he might take too long. And uh, again, no problems. A great result. Deep pocket ball, the 10 pin being pushed over to the left. Alan Atkins leading by one pin at the completion of the eighth. But Paul Morland, a strike to build on in the ninth. As he comes into the 10th frame. And of course, John, if Paul can get three more strikes here, Atkins can't win the match. So he's playing for the title right here and now. Oh dear, a bad one under the whip. And saying a few words to himself, uh, in disgust, no doubt. He got up there at a thousand miles an hour. He could have put the, uh, the match to bed but rushed the shot under pressure, and uh, that's the result. And he's got a tough spare to go for. A vital one he needs and gets it. Boy, we've got a great game here. 186 to 187, potentially. One pin the difference. That's about the whole margin in, in this 10-frame match. What a great grand final of the Coca-Cola Classic for 1985. Paul Morland just checking the scorecard to make sure that he is the one, in fact, in arrears. He wants a strike now. That'll really put the wood on Atkins to uh, bowl a good first ball. Looking for a strike, a bonus ball strike. He wants one. He's got it. Good finish for Paul Morin, and uh, he's made Alan Atkins win this tournament. 206. Atkins now needs a strike in the first ball to have a very good chance of taking out this national final. So what a great finish it's going to be to the Coca-Cola Classic for 1985. Paul Morland finishing with a 206. And Alan uh, Atkins. Can he now 
get that lead back. He needs a strike. This one's got to be a strike. Got to be 10. And that is it. Paul Morland wins the tournament. Allen cannot win. And he knows that he's let it go. Paul Morland just checking. Beauty, he says. He's still not quite sure, but... Uh, well, Atkins. What a disappointment for him. Top seed. A three-time winner of major tournaments here at the centre. Letting it get away. And maybe Alan doesn't know that he can't win the game yet. Because he, he really tried for that one and, and put on a nice show when he got it. But uh, I think Alan, yes, he's conceded defeat now. And what a shame we didn't have a tie. I, I would have liked to see them in that situation. Well, he'll bowl his bonus ball for getting that spare in the tenth. But the tournament, he can't win. Finishes with 2 3 Alan Atkins defeated by Paul Morland. Paul Morland the victor by three pins in the Coca-Cola Classic. Paul well, Atkins the runner-up. You checked for $700. Alan, you had your chances. Couldn't quite take them. No, John. I, um, he gave me the chance in the 10th frame. It was cat and mouse all the way through the game. Um, I thought on the, four, on the 10th frame on lane 14, I thought, well, if I strike, I'll close the game out here, but it wasn't to be. But he was a good component, uh, competitor, sorry, and uh, it was a good match. All right, well done. Congratulations on being the runner-up. Mr Barney Porter from Coca-Cola has that lovely trophy for you, and well played. Alan Atkins, the runner-up of the Coca-Cola Classic. And so to the winner. The very popular winner it is, too, here at uh, Logan City Lanes. Paul Morland, winner of the Coca-Cola Classic and from Coca-Cola and Golf in Paul. Your check for $1,000. You're a very happy boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me. No, it was very hard. It was, well, it was very hard. Alan puts up a good struggle every time I play him. Usually I don't get that lucky, but this time, that's it. Well, near the end there, you gave Alan the chance to get into the game. Did you think you'd blown your chances? I did. I thought I choked too much. Um, I thought I needed another strike. Two strikes near the end of the game, and I had him. When I did that silly seven, I thought, oh, no, that's it. I'm finished. But he didn't. He got onto his lane. He did exactly the same. So I'm pleased I won. That's the main. Paul Wellbold, you had a couple of tough games against Tom Curry and then against Alan Atkins. You came through them well, and that magnificent trophy from uh, Mr. Barney Porter of Coca-Cola as being the winner of the Coca-Cola Bottlers Classic for 1985. I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank Coca-Cola. It's. Absolutely. It was one of my dreams to win something decent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Well bowled. So there it is. Paul Morlin takes away the Coca-Cola Classic for 1985. I'd like to thank my co-commentators, Steve Mackey and Bob Cook, to everybody here at Logan City Lanes that uh, helped us with this telecast. Thanks very much for all of the efforts you've put in. And now on behalf of the full team, I'm John McCoy for Nines Wide World of Sports, bidding you goodbye.